Hey everyone, happy Pride. This is Maggie Bot's Top 100 Games of All Time. Today we are going over numbers 40 through 31. We are well past the time that I remember what any of these slides are going to say, so you're going to be as surprised as I am. Uh, let's begin. Number 40 is Nornberg. Um, this is a 2010 title from Andrea Studding and White Goblin Games. It fits two to five players and kind of scales up and down how big it needs to be for the different player counts. Um, this one never came out to the States, though White Goblin and I tried to push and kind of hint at a few different publishers a few years ago. They were looking for a North American partner. Never really panned out, but it's definitely still a possibility in future because this game has aged incredibly well. Um, this is definitely one that I enjoy showing to people and teaching because not, not often do people play it themselves or they'll buy it and then they won't learn it by themselves. Um, I do have one really embarrassing time that I taught this game and I unfortunately taught the money economy wrong and it was only about halfway through the game that I recognized what it was that I taught incorrectly but I couldn't really fix it at that point and so I've had one very bad game of this but normally it's such a fabulous little game. Um, at the very beginning of the game you kind of set out the economy and how it's going to work and so there's very little randomness in the game itself and all of the randomness is done at the beginning of a round so you can plan for it. Um, it's buying and selling goods and trying to get them to the right places, trying to control the most of a good over a given round, trying to do a diversity of things in a game where it's really nice and easy to specialize. And it also has some of the most cute components. They did Bierstein meeples and boot meeples and very famously they did these really pretty pink cupcake meeples. Uh, just darling, uh, every once in a while I see it for trade in local boards so people will buy it and they'll never play it and then they'll trade it away. I cannot recommend this game enough and if you've been to Seattle and you've met up with me we might have played it together because I have taught it quite a few times now. Uh, Nuremberg is fabulous and J.S. Studding is responsible for things like Haunted Teutonica and Stouffer Dynasty. He doesn't make a lot of games but when he does the games are really good and very low randomness which is something I really appreciate. <laughs> I will highly recommend not using the the promo that you can get in this game. It was like a little mini promo and you can add some extra characters into the bag. Those characters are completely broken. So I, I wouldn't recommend the promo, but I highly recommend the game. Number 39 is Las Vegas. This is a 2012 title from Redeker Dorn and Aaliyah Robinsberger. Um, it plays two to five players. This is the quintessential end of the night. We are done, we've played three hour games, two four hour games, we've played a million games and we just want something to kind of rally each other up and have a little bit of fun with. Las Vegas is perfect. It feels like a Vegas type game. Everyone's rolling dice and kind of playing a little bit of chicken to try and get the best uh, coins out on the board. And you're trying to control these casinos and take the control away from others and it's just perfect. And then if you want, you can import the expansion called Las Vegas Boulevard. It's a modular expansion, so you don't have to use all of it at once, but especially I think it's called the Jukebox, and then the little purple dice expansions are my absolute favorites. Um, can't recommend it enough, but it's a really nice, light, easy, in print, <laughs> cheap game. All those things that I normally cannot say about games I love. Um, oh, number 30 is Capital Lux. This is a 2016 title, two to four players, published by Aporta Games. It was designed by, I'm going to say, Eilis Finson and Christian Amundsen Otsby. Uh, that could be very wrong pronunciation, I apologize. Uh, this came out the same year that Honshu was getting all of the hype at the end of the year, so I think it got a little lost in there. And Aporta sold their copies to, I think it was ACD distribution, and so it did come out in the States, sorta, but not a lot of copies, and it sold out right away. I believe it's on its way back now, and for the price, I can't imagine an, a better uh, little hour-long game. It's got lots of strategy, lots of interaction between the players, but not direct got gotcha interaction. It's more like, well, I'm going to put this modifier card secretly on this pile so you don't know what it is, but you're going to have to make up for it. Um, it works really well from two to four as well. And then, of course, as you can see in the in the cover art, Quan Chai Moria, uh, Moria, I've not met him yet, so I don't really know how to pronounce his name, but he is this fabulous artist, and so many people are using his art after he did, I think it was Catacomb 2nd Edition, was like his big claim to fame. 
Um, I, I love everything that he's done so far, including, oh man, do you guys see flip ships? The, just beautiful. And they gave him this kind of Tron-esque um, style for this game, and it came out really beautifully, including the back of the cards are beautiful, which is not always the case. Uh, can't recommend it enough. Again, a game I've taught a lot of people. Anytime you see me, I might have it on me at that point too. Number 37 is Cavern of the Cave Farmers from 2013. This is Uwe Rosenberg's um, kind of big game a few years ago. Um, it is one to seven players and published by Lookout and, and Mayfair. Uh, I've played this a lot at that like two to five player level and I think those are my preferred counts. I've played one six player game and I've never played the solo so I can't really speak to it stretching out that well. It's Uwe. He balances everything so well that it's 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 hard to find too many faults in any of his games. Uh, Caverna gets compared to Agricola a lot, though I don't think I don't think it's necessary to compare his games because Agricola to me is a drafting card based game where you pick your strategy at the very beginning of the game and try and execute it throughout the game. Whereas Caverna, you build a foundation of a strategy as you go, and then toward the midpoint in the game, you have to choose how you think you're going to score and win. It's not that you turn zero decided on this one tile you need to get because if you do that someone could just come along and spend a few resources and scoop that one scoring tile away from you and then you're kind of left with nothing so i i quite like it i think the questing mechanism here is probably the most interesting part because it is otherwise a pretty straightforward game and the, this questing mechanism in the middle of the game gives you action points you can spend and I, I quite like the way that that was integrated and I'd like to see more action point uh, games in general because it's always one of my favorite things to see. Uh, number 36 is Trois, it's a 2010 title. It goes from one to four players um, and it was published by Pearl Games a while back and then Z-Man picked it up in the States. Uh, this is designed by Sebastian Dujardin, Xavier Georges, and Alain Aubin. Um, Trois is one of my favorite games to play online it is fabulous at two players. Uh, I've played quite a lot of the different uh, modular expansions. Each part of the game is kind of a chunk and then each expansion can modify that chunk and you can mix and match. But it, it's just really worth your time. It's simple, it's beautiful. I quite like the art style, though I've heard quite the opposite that people don't love it. I think there's so few games that use this kind of very traditional painting style. Um, there's one called Brussels, which I've not given a fair shot to. I'm surprised I didn't like it more in my first play, but I never went back and, and retried it. So that's kind of on my list of things to do in life. Uh, but Trois is also speedy fast, like 40, 45 minutes fast. And so the setup and explanation takes 20, but the playing of it, once you know it, is so, so fast. So I quite like that. Number 35 is Medici. This is a 1995 Ryanair Canizia title from, uh, right now it's coming out from Girl Games. Uh, it's a two to six player kind of um, bidding game, I guess. <laughs> My poor brain, it's kind of set collection-y too. Um, Medici goes down as having probably the most arts I can think of, like different art done for it. And there's always some graphic design issues. No matter which one you decided to pick up, there's always going to be some sort of graphic design problem or colors that are off or not matching enough or pictures that one has like the bowl of spices and the other has the, the full tableau of things. And just there's always something wrong with it. But the game is so fun. It's simple and perfect and tricky and uh, interactive. Uh, Vincent Dutrait did the, the last version that came out on Kickstarter. That's the one I still have. I've traded away my other two copies at this point. And I've heard there's a card game, which I haven't tried yet, but I've wanted to. I know uh, my friend Suze has it, so I'm, I'm excited to see that. Um, there's nothing really more to say about this. You kind of get a, a little tableau of cards and, and you kind of pick and choose how many are going to come out. There's some restraints, of course, and then you put out a bid and everyone goes around and they bid on those cards. And each round you level up the different types of goods and you score based on how well you do in each type of good. And that's the game. So it's, it's similar in my mind as like raw in its simplicity, but also in its strategy. I, I quite like the balance. 
Uh, number 34 has zero balance. So this is Florenza from 2010. It's two to five players from Golden Egg Games this last time, but I think it was Placentia Games. Um, that's, uh, and it's an Italian company. Uh, Stefano Graupi um, made the game. Uh, Florenza, how to best describe this? Um, each player will kind of design which actions they'd like by placing their tokens out on the different different available boards. So that's mine and yours and all of these other things. And then the real trick of the game is that depending on where you place your meeples, that's the order in which they'll resolve. And so you have to be careful to resolve things in the correct order so you have the stuff you need to pay for other things and to not get scooped by another player. And you're building in the buildings in the middle of the board and you're building out this beautiful cathedral in the center and that's where all your points are. So the game does have kind of, it feels a little samey if you play it back to back to back to back, but I played like four times the first week I had it and I wasn't sick of it. So it's not a bad thing, it's more can you do the proper things better than the other people, <laughs> if that makes sense. It does have a pretty long play time, it's at least three hours, but it's a good well spent three hours in my mind and I quite love it. And I think the art is pretty interesting and it's not so much art that you get distracted um, and you can't see all of the bits. Like it's it, it's needed just perfect enough. Number 33 is Ginkopolis. This is a 2012 title. It goes from one to five players. This was also designed by Xavier Georges, who we saw on Twa. Um, this was published by Z-Man in the States. Uh, Ginkopolis has gone in and out of print in a really odd pattern here in the States. I don't know if that's true also in Europe, but for certain first came out here, I bought it in 2012, actually, and then it went out of print for, gosh, like a year or two, and then it came back and went straight out of print again as soon as the expansion came out. And so this has turned into one of those kind of like, people are overpaying for this by like a hundred dollars, and it's a really good game, but it's sad to me that I could sell it so easily. It's such a great, great title, but for some reason they just didn't want to or couldn't keep it in print. Um, the game itself is sort of drafting, sort of area control, sort of tiling. It's got a really cool mix of these mechanisms. Um, on a turn you will play a card and it either builds a tile up or a tile out and you're going to get points or resources depending on which of those you chose. Um, you can also just kind of take a, a lame action of just playing a card and getting some stuff. Hopefully you don't do that too often. But at the end of the game, you're going to check your area control for the different chunks of um, different colors and make a massive amount of points. So the trick to Gengopolis is getting to your second play because your first play, you're not going to really see how to get points or how to win. And at the end of the game, you're likely going to get crushed in the end game scoring because it's so dang important and it's really hard to explain to people how best to not get cut off in that situation without them overthinking it. Um, this is one of the few games I've ever played solo. I played it once. Um, the the, the non-player, the, the kind of NPC, is named Hal, and Hal just gets like a free build action every round. And so they amass resources and points like it's going out of style, and it's really hard to beat them. So I had a pretty good time with that. So if you like solo gaming, this might be one to look into. And I'd be surprised if this doesn't exist somewhere online, but I, you can't play this asynchronous. You'd have to play it real time because it's got sort of a drafting element. So um, there you go. Gankopolis is fabulous. I can't say enough about it. The expansion had two modules I liked, one that made a couple of really high point um, tiles and one, gosh, I can't even remember, but I usually just play the base because it's so much better. Number 32 is Lemes. This is a 2014 title. It's from Martin F. and Ada Hischbiel. It's a two-player optimization game. Um, so players uh, have a deck of cards in their hand. One of them shuffles it up and draws a card each turn. And the other player fishes that same card out and you build out your board. And each card that you add, you can put meeples onto. And depending on where the meeples are at the end of the game, you're going to score points. And so 
Both players have access to the exact same cards, but your boards are never going to look the same at the end of the game. I do know that if I get another copy of this, I could play it up to four players or six or eight or however many. So I have been considering that um, in future because I quite love this game and I, I do teach it here and there and it's always a hit. They made a game, Z-Man made a game called Cities, which was the one to four player version of it, but I've heard that the scoring is just not as good. I do have a copy um, of Cities and I've only played it once and it just, it just wasn't the same. And so I think if I liked Lee May say I wasn't going to like Cities and that's kind of the problem. Number 31, or our last one for today, is Colorado. Uh, this is a very simple card game from Michael Schacht. Uh, Rio Grande brings it to the States. It's two to five players from 2003. Uh, Colorado has the kind of no big deal gotcha of any card game that I've played in a long time. So each turn you kind of reveal cards and you can place them on the board. Or you can take a set of cards and be out of the round. And your goal is to get um, specific numbers of a given color and not to take too many colors. So there's a, kind of a basic one, which you can get as many as you want of the three colors that you choose. Um, and then there's kind of an advanced one where you want specific numbers of colors, uh, which I, I prefer drastically over the regular one. Uh, it is a great, easy to pack around, just numbers on cards type of game. And it is one of the best ones. Uh, the art is cute to me. It's just a bunch of chameleons and they're adorable. Um, I've seen other versions that have slightly different reskinned arts. I think they were mostly done by fans of the game. But I am always excited to see Michael Schacht's name on something, including he has an upcoming game from Z-Man called Smile this year. And it has no information online yet, not even a rule book. So I'll be looking out for that. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are going to be heading into the top 20 next, and I can't tell you how exciting that is for me. But uh, if you have been enjoying this, please share and comment, and I'd love to talk to you about your favorite games as always. And uh, thank you very much. I'll see you all next time.